Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to day seven of the holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using a newish stamp set from Ulta New. And I'm going to do some heat embossing first and then put some water coloring on top and get kind of like a glowing effect. Hope you guys enjoy and let's get into it. The stamp set I'm using is called Starry Night from Ulta New, and it has some really great star clustered images, one that's in the shape of a tree, and another that's kind of got a corner element to it, if you want to use that one. So I'm going to start out by using watercolor paper today. I plan to do some painting over the top of that tree shape, so I'm just getting my watercolor paper ready. This is some Fabriano Artistico Extra White watercolor paper and I place it inside a misty stamp positioning tool and then I'm going to prep the watercolor paper with an anti-static powder tool. I'm going to be doing some heat embossing and I want to make sure that this area is completely ready so that I don't have any uh, embossing powder kind of sticking to areas where I don't want it. I'm inking up that tree shape with Versamark ink and then I'll go ahead and stamp that down onto my watercolor paper. And this is a really big image, so I'm gonna make sure I really walk my fingers over every single area of this tree shape. And I'm actually going to stamp it twice. And this is because this watercolor paper is quite textured and it just really helps to stamp things twice on watercolor paper. You'll get a much better impression and it gives it kind of a second chance to fill in all of those gaps over the textured areas. So I'm going to add some gold embossing powder over the top. This is actually gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, and it's a nice gold shade. And I do want to add an additional star to the top of this tree shape, but I'm not going to heat set this yet. I decided since that little star wasn't really going to interfere with the embossing powder that I've just applied, I would go ahead and add it first and add the embossing powder on top of that before I heat set the entire card front. <clears throat> excuse me, doing this voiceover early in the morning, so my voice isn't quite awake yet, so please forgive me. Um, I'm stamping this star twice, just like I did for the rest of the tree, especially since this star is a little bit bigger and more solid. I really wanted to make sure I had a nice, complete stamping of that shape. So I'm going to add more of that embossing powder. And what happened this time is I think I put my fingerprint just right next to that star when I was placing it onto the watercolor paper. So I had some embossing powder that kind of stuck to it. So I just took a dry paintbrush and brushed that away. I then used my heat tool to heat set this until it was completely smooth and melted. So now I'm going to move on to the watercolor portion of this card front. And this is where the bulk of my time was spent when it comes to this card design taken some blue painters tape and taped this down to a hardboard so that I can paint on top and it's going to help prevent the paper from warping as it dries. I'm coating the entire area with a kind of a generous coat of clean water. And this is going to help the colors to soften out and mix. I don't want like really harsh lines in my watercoloring. I want them to be fairly soft. And I'm going to do this in a few different layers. I'm going to put down a layer of color at the beginning and then I'll go back through uh, after it's dried and add an additional layer of color. So I'm starting out with this lighter limey green and then I'm putting some more intense greens around the outer edges and then eventually I'll be adding black to the outer to the very very corners. I did take a paper towel and sop up some of that color in the center because I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. But basically, I just want this to have a glowing effect from the tree shape and have the outer edges be very dramatic, be very, very dark and black. And um, I was also thinking as I was painting this that as it dries, it's going to lighten up quite a bit. So you'll be able to see here as I dry this that all the colors just kind of mute back. They're not quite as, as intense as it was when my paint was wet. So after this was dry, I went back in with more color just to darken up those edges again. I wanted to make sure that it was nice and dramatic. Brought that green back in and I eventually added some more of that limey green shade right back in the center. So this is almost done. I'm just going to go back in and cover up some of those more dry spots that were kind of just screaming at me. Um, I just wanted them to look a little bit more blended in. I added even more black around the outer edge and added a nice green along the edges to get that nice transition from the lighter green in the center to the dark black shade in the, on the edges and corners. I also cleaned up that small little area near the top. 
So after all my watercoloring was done and dry, I peeled off the blue painter's tape. This is one of my most favorite parts of watercoloring like this because it's such a nice clean line. And then I'm going to trim down this piece here because I want it to be a little bit smaller than a five by seven card front. So I'm just trimming it down and then I'm going to work on the sentiment that's going to go on the card. I've chosen to use some vellum and I'm going to prep that with an anti-static powder tool. I'm going to stamp it and emboss in that same gold embossing powder. So I have a stamp from the stamp set, it just says Merry Christmas, and I've stamped that in Versamark ink. And like I just mentioned, I coated it in some gold embossing powder. Once again, this is gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. Tapped off the excess and then hit that with my heat tool. And I trimmed this piece down so that it was like a little narrow flag and then I took my Versamark ink pad and I added it just to the uh, left edge of that strip, dipped it in the embossing powder, and then hit that with my heat tool. And this is going to give um, that one edge just a gold shade, and that's going to give me an opportunity to put adhesive behind that area. I did the same thing to all the edges of my watercolor piece just to add a little more gold. I added some inking around all of the edges and then dipped each side into my container of embossing powder. This is when having a larger container of embossing powder is really helpful. You can dip your entire edge of your piece into that embossing powder and it's super easy. Then went around the edges and heat set that till everything was smooth and melted. And I really love adding gold edging like this on my holiday cards. I think it gives it um, a little more of a elegant look. So as far as that um, greeting goes, I'm going to wait to adhere that until I've got everything on my card front, but I just wanted to get an idea of how it would look. So I'm placing it over that edge, and then I'm going to prep my card base. So like I mentioned before, this is a 5x7 card. I've got some basil marshmallow cardstock, and I've cut it to be 10 inches wide by 7 inches tall, and then scored it at 5 inches so that it created a 5x7 card. I folded that over and creased the fold with my bone folder. And then I put a bunch of foam adhesive behind my watercolor panel. I was not shy with the foam adhesive. I wanted to make sure that it would hold up to going through the mail. And then I pressed that down onto my card front, nice and centered on my five by seven card. So the last thing to do is to adhere that little sentiment strip. So I'm going to take some Ranger Multimedia Matte Adhesive and put a tiny bit of adhesive just behind that gold embossing on the left edge. And I'll get that in place and then I'm going to put an acrylic block over the top and that's going to hold it down while it dries. Um, the vellum wanted to kind of curl up, but once I place that on the, I place the acrylic block on top, it held it down long enough so that it adhered flat. And that is the complete card for today. I really enjoy how this card turned out. It's a little bit dramatic with kind of like the darker edges and like the glowing from the tree. And if you don't want to miss any more holiday card videos, you want to make sure you hit every single one of them, you're going to want to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That makes it so whenever a new video goes up, you will be notified for sure. And also hit the thumbs up button. That lets me know you loved it and you want to see more cards like this. So on screen right now, I've got two more cards for you to check out. These are the 2017 and 2016 cards for day seven of those years. So if you wanna check out those, click on those on the screen right now, or you can check out even farther back all of the previous years of day seven down below in the video description. Thanks so much for watching today, and I will catch you guys on Monday for day eight.